So raise your hand if your save function in whatever game you're making looks a little something uh, like this, which is a total mess. And to a certain extent, this is unavoidable because there's a bunch of stuff that you just need to save whenever you're saving. But let's talk a little bit about maybe organizing your save file a little bit better so that you can write data to it as the game is progressing, so you don't need to save all of the relevant data at the moment where you press save game. And in some cases, this might even be necessary to do if you want to save data that pertains to a level that is currently not loaded. So I'm here in a separate project real quick, uh, just something blank. And we're going to make a fairly simple uh, save thing, and that is... I want to make an object, kind of like an item pickup, that once I pick it up, it gets written to the save game, and then when I load the game again, it remembers which ones have been picked up, and those get destroyed. So let's just do that as an example. Let's make a blueprint class for the save game. So we go into all classes, and we make a save game, and we'll call this SG test save, or something like that. And this is going to contain all these saved variables. So we'll save the location for the player as well, because certain data, as I said before, definitely does need to be saved at the moment of saving, right? Wherever you stand in the world and what level you're currently in, you definitely need to deal with that when you're saving. You can't dynamically keep that up to date, sadly. So that will be a vector. And then we'll also make a uh, array here for picked up items, so let's call this picked up, or something like that, or destroyed, or you can call it whatever you want, really. And I'm going to make that a string array, and I'll zoom in a little bit for you guys, so you can actually see what is going on. So that's going to be a string array, as you can see here. And that'll be all the data that we put into the save game for now. This, of course, scales up bigger and bigger and bigger if you make a full game. And then let's also make a, a pick upable actor, so let's call this a BP Pickup. And then I'm just going to add like a sphere and a, a sphere collider as well. Let's make the sphere collider a little bit bigger. And this will write its own name to that save game object whenever it gets picked up. So we don't wait around for the moment where we save to check, hey, which items have been picked up and which items haven't been picked up. We update the save file or at least a copy of the saved data that we are going to keep in memory as the game itself is progressing. So for that, we first need to have a save object in memory. So we're going to keep that in a game instance. You can keep this in any persistent place, uh, honestly, but the game instance is usually the easiest place to keep this. So let's make a game instance here, and we'll call this something like save game instance. I will open it up, but before we do anything else, I go into projects and I want to set the game instance to the one that we just made so that the project actually uses that game instance. And inside there, uh, on event init, which is kind of like begin play for the game instance, it's when the game itself initializes, the very first thing that happens. What we'll do is we will uh, create a save game object of the type save game test save in this case. And we're just going to promote that to a variable. So we'll call this something like um, save object. And the wonderful thing about this is now we can access this fairly easily from anywhere at any time in the game because it initializes this right away. And whenever we load the game, we will also just set this to just like pretend like this, uh, we're loading something actually. Uh, so load save game from slots. We give in a slot name, and then we need to cast that to our save game test save, and then we will set that, right? So we'll do this in our load game uh, function, which you might as well put in the game instance as well, the save and load function, so that it's easy to access the save object uh, with those. And that way, whenever we actually load the game, this save object that we keep in our own memory to easily do small updates to, will actually reflect the game that we just loaded. But we'll probably get back to that in a moment when we actually set up a simple saving and loading function. For now, what I personally like to do uh, is 
instead of having to get game instance and then we need to cast it to this game instance every time we want to access this save object, I like to make a blueprint function library uh, to make a function that allows me to access this easily anywhere at any time. So let's make a blueprint function library and call this uh, save game utils or something like that. Doesn't really matter what you call it, of course. And a new function will be uh, get save object. And get save object will start with a get game instance, which needs a world context object. So we're just going to put that in there. Uh, this is effectively always just going to be a reference to self. Uh, but the blueprint function library itself doesn't exist in any world, so it needs to be given in a context object. Uh, then we're going to cast this to the that we just created. And then we will get the save object, which we will put in as a return value. So now anywhere in our project, as long as we can give in a world context object, we can very easily get this save game instance. And we could even make this a pure function if we wanted to, uh, if we don't want to bother with uh, execution pins, which is always kind of nice. Technically slightly less optimized, but it doesn't really matter. So now that we have that function in our blueprint function library, we can go back into our BP pickup. And here we can now very easily just uh, get our save object. We give in a world context object and we get our save object back. So the world context object is just going to be self. Sadly, there isn't a good way of setting self as the default value for Blueprint Function Library functions uh, in just Blueprint. So you're just going to need to do that a bunch. It's kind of a little bit annoying. Uh, but for now, we uh, do actor begin overlap and we just check if the other actor is our player character. So we'll just do that by casting it to a third person character uh, because that's the easiest, quickest way to do that. And if it is, what we're going to do is in this save game object, we will get the picked up array and we will add to that. We'll add unique just to be sure that we don't add the same thing twice to save a little bit of space. And what we will add is just the get object name and the object that we're going to get the name for is self. This will just return the name of any uh, given object, which is usually a unique name and you just put that in there and now anytime i pick one of these up it's going to add itself to the save data uh, object that we have in our game instance and then of course i will uh, destroy this actor then on begin play we use this same save game object uh, and everything that has been picked up and we check whether or not it's contains a certain item and the item that we're going to be checking for again is going to be this object name as a little bit messy to reuse these notes this way but that's how we're going to do it and if it does contain uh this name so if we hook this up like this we're just going to immediately uh destroy it on begin play as well we don't need to duplicate that branch over and there we go so this effectively is a very quick and easy way to set up a object that keeps track of itself being uh, destroyed and then adds itself to the save file. Of course, we still need to, when we save our save game, take that object that we have in the uh, save game instance here, because this is just an object in memory. This isn't being saved to a save file on disk or whatever. So we still need to make a save function that takes this save object and actually saves it to a file on your computer and then one that loads that file and puts it back into this object. But now this actor itself is responsible for adding itself to that save object and checking that save object on whether or not it should do anything with it. So we don't need to make a massive, way overblown function on save and load to do everything related to saving and loading all at once, which again, can be pretty good because if we load our game in one level but we have another level in which we have a couple of these actors those actors don't exist yet when we're loading the game so we can't actually do any operations on them but now that this actor itself deals with this and just checks the save file suddenly we don't have any issues with doing anything with data between levels and since we're keeping this save object in the game instance which is a persistent place we can even very easily carry data between levels so if you also write your character's levels uh, and stats and like it's HP and whatever, 
to the save object every time you leave a level, you can then just easily also use the save objects whenever a level loads to get that data back. Because that's stuff that you're going to need to add into the save file itself anyway, as well. So let's add in a couple of these blueprint uh, pickup items that I just created into this actual map. So we'll put in one here, They're bigger than I thought they were actually. Uh, so we'll put in one here and one there and one there and one there. And you can see as I go to uh, pick them up, they get destroyed and they are actively getting added to that list. But now when I uh, restart the game again, they don't do anything because I didn't actually save that data yet. And because of how uh, this all works, what we actually do want to do is we want to make a, a new level here real quick. Because we want to load in our save object before this level itself gets loaded. So what we do is we go up to File, and we do a new level, and we can just do a empty level. That's uh, fine. Or a basic level. Let's do a basic level just because it looks a little bit better. And I'll just make a real quick widget here. Uh, that we can uh, main menu. We'll give that a canvas panel with a button. We'll align the button to the center and set the position to zero, zero. Alignment will set to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And then we'll add a quick little text to it. Set that to be centered in the center as well. And the text itself will say something like start game. Fairly simple, but that's all that we really need. We'll come back to this in a moment. For now, I think what we're going to do is we're going to make our saving and our loading function on the game instance. Let's make some custom events here, and we'll call this save game, another custom event, which we'll call load game. Again, you can make these anywhere you want. Uh, you could make these in the game mode uh, or even within the widget that has the save button in it if you really, really wanted to. I like making them in the game instance uh, when I'm doing this because it already has the save object that I'm working with in here. And when we save the game, all that we need to do is we need to uh, take the save object that we have already been updating and do any last minute additions to it. So what we can do is we uh, can set the location in it because of course the location variable that we created needs to be saved at the moment of saving, as I've been talking about this entire time. So we can just get the player character and get actor location and provide that in as our save location. And then anything else that needs to be saved, in this case is only the item pickups, have been updated throughout our gameplay experience. So we don't need to make an entire like separate function or an entire like very, very long line of nodes for that because that's all been taken care of. So that data is already in this object. So from there, we can simply save game to slots. Uh, and in this case, we're just going to call this uh, save game. And that's kind of all there is to it. And then whenever we try to load a game, what we can do is we can check whether or not our save game uh, already exists. And only if it does do we do the rest, otherwise it's going to result in some issues with like null objects because it's trying to load an object that doesn't really exist yet and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but if the save game does exist, we can uh, load the game from slots, which again, the slot name, which is going to use save game. You can make that a variable, of course, if you want to. And after that's been loaded, what we do is we get our uh, save game object. And as I showed you before, we need to cast this to our uh, save game test save. And we're just going to set that we're just going to get all the values uh, that we saved in this function, which again, most of that is being written to the save game object as the game progresses, except for things like location or maybe something like health or like player level or whatever. And that's all going to get set to this created save game object that we keep in memory throughout the entire gameplay experience. So now we just have access to all that up-to-date information whenever we want. So now, going back into our, our little UI widget, I want to uh, make a, a function whenever we press this button. What I want to do is I want to get the game instance. We cast that to the uh, save game instance class that we made. And from there, I simply just load game. Doesn't need to return any information at the moment. It just needs to say, hey, 
take all the information from disk and put it into that object that we keep around in memory. And after it's done that, we can open a level. Uh, I like doing that by object reference when I can. And I think it's called third person map, right? Yeah. And in this level, I will go into the level blueprint and I will just uh, create that widget real quick. Uh, I call it main menu and we'll add it to the viewport. So we have our start game thing here, and that opens up into uh, this level. Now we just need a way to save, and the way that I'm going to do that is just through a debug key real quick. Of course, you'd want to make a menu for this and all that kind of stuff, but that's not the point of this video. So all that we're going to do here is I'm going to make a debug key somewhere in my player character. So like debug key, I like using the F key. Anybody who's familiar with the channel knows that at this point. Uh, and from there, we just get the game instance uh, and all that kind of good stuff. We cast to our save game instance that we made and we save our game. Now, one last thing that we do need to do is we go back in to our levels, which is somewhere, I think, in here, third person map. And here we also want to open the level blueprint because when we start uh, this level, which has a begin play, uh, for itself as well what we actually want to do is we want to get the save object world context object can just be get player character or something uh, easy like that and from that save object we want to get the location that we want to be uh, set to the reason that i use get player character here is because we're going to need to uh, set the actual location on this thing anyway to the location that we saved at now, if you have multiple levels in your game, of course, you don't want to do it this way. You might have something in your game instance that loads the level that you save that, and then in your actual like load game uh, functionality or something like that, and then set you to that location in that level. There's a bunch of ways to deal with this. Uh, the location setting is just to show you, hey, you don't want to do everything in your game this way, setting it to a object in memory whenever something happens. Some things just do need to happen at the moment of saving and loading. Uh, but a majority of the data that you're going to be writing to your saves, you can do dynamically in the way that this video shows. So let's go back to this thing called uh, start level that I made. And now we can uh, start our game. And we didn't have, that's fair enough, we didn't have a start location yet. But you can see that it worked because it did set me to zero, zero, zero. So uh, <laughs> let's go back into here real quick just for the sake of this video. And we will only check uh, if this is not equal to zero, zero, zero with like a margin of five just because. Uh, will we do this? So now it won't set me to zero, zero, zero uh, if we don't have anything in there yet. So let's try it again. We can start the game and now we're here and I can uh, pick up these two things over here. You can press the F key to save. Now I can close out of the game. We're back into my start level. And if I start the game now, you can see it put me back at the place where I saved and those two things are gone. And these objects now entirely take care of their own existence by adding themselves to the save file and checking the save file when they get spawned in. So that's just a handy little trick and a good way to think about save files. You might be tempted to just stuff everything into your save game at the moment when you save, but it might be easier to delegate that responsibility to objects themselves and just keep one save object in memory, modify that and just write that to disk when you save along with a couple of small important in the moment operations. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 